How do you beat the Sicilian defense? I'm Grandmaster Max Slingworth, and in this video, I will show you a game very recently played between the world chess champion Magnus Carlsen playing with the white pieces against the uh, Russian player and a past main time Russian uh, chess champion, Peter Svidler. And I'll show you his picture just here so you can see what the players look like. And with that, let's get into the game, which shows how to beat the Sicilian defense, which for those of you who don't know, is with e4 and c5. Carlsen played the main line with knight to f3. Svidler played d6. Uh, and Carlsen went for the open Sicilian with d4, which is the main line. And indeed, I wrote a book on this a few years ago, the Dismantling Sicilian 2017 update of De La Villa's book, uh, The Road 2009. Uh, also tiled dismantling the Sicilian. Now, if black plays e6, I find the open Sicilian still works very well. We have a similar sab to what Carlson played in the game. However, if black plays knight c6, then I find that the Ross Lima with bishop b5 is more effective because you can either play a strategic approach where you take on c6 and double black's pawns, or you can play a more direct approach of preparing c3 and d4 to get both of your pawns in the center. In either case, white gets some small chances of an opening advantage, and black has a few problems to solve. But in the game, black played d6. We had d4, cd4, and knight d4. And one reason I think that every player should learn the open scene at some point in their life is because it leads to a very open position with very good chances for white to fight for the initiative. And if black doesn't play a move like a6, you'll often See why playing moves like bishop e3, f3, queen d2, and castles are uh, long in some order. Uh, say, for example, if black plays knight c6, then one reasonable shortcut as an alternative to bishop g5 main lines is to move f3. And then, say, if black were to play e6 and to just play normal developing moves, well, then it's very easy for white to build up a good attacking position where with g4, g5, and the subsequent pawn so on the king side, white will get very good attacking chances. And with his English attack set up, his extra space will mean that his flank attack is stronger than black's comparative flank attack on the queen side with the king's castle on opposite sides. So Svidler's move a6 and knight off is a stronger continuation as it's just more flexible where there may be some positions where a knight will be better placed on d7 than on c6. Uh, so white obviously has a lot of different options, but Carlsen played the main line of bishop to e3. And interestingly enough, Svidler didn't play the main line of e5, which is a typical knight off move, putting the pawn to match white's pawn in the center without allowing any bishop b5 checks and knight to f5. In that case, after knight b3 and bishop e6, you can either play h3 and follow Seth Roman's recent repertoire book for white uh, against the knight off and Taimanov, or you can play the main lines with f3 and you know, go for the plan I mentioned before of castling long and charging the g pawn so that black is not in time to support a d5 push with his knight on f6. You know, d5 doesn't really work that well while black has not got so many pieces developed. In fact, the main line for black is to play h5 and stop white playing g4 in a quite radical fashion. But in that case, I think knight d5 is a good move. And after takes, knight d7, queen d2 and g6. The move long castle has been scoring very well for white in recent grandmaster games. And after knight b6 and queen a5, you know, the fury goes on with, you know, the bishops being traded and white eventually putting his pawn on c4. And with his extra space in the center and black's knight being a little bit awkward it will give white some chances for a small advantage and at least in practice white's been doing very well from this position in over the board play so in the game Svidler played the main alternative of e6 uh, and after e6 carlson played the move bishop to e2 which it's true if you like these positions with bishop e2 and bishop e3 well, you could also have reached him via 6 bishop e2 with a possible transposition. And White's idea is that he's not going to just simply castle and play it in a classical way. But Carlson has something a little bit different in mind. Where Svidler played the move queen to c7, 
trying to be a bit flexible and keep the options of either developing the queen side or developing the king side as a way to try and nullify, say, a quick g4, g5. So Carlson in turn played queen to d2 in this position, keeping the option of long castling. And after b5, Carlson played a3 to stop b4 and the attack on the e-pawn. And then after bishop b7 and f3, we reach a very interesting situation where basically it's an English attack where both sides' pieces are not ideally placed. On the one hand, White played these somewhat slow moves of bishop e2 and a3, where normally you wouldn't rush to play bishop e2, since normally it's more important to get your attack going. But at the same time, moves like bishop b7 and queen c7 are also a little bit slow, and don't really directly support the opening of the queen side or the center for black. Maybe the best move for black here is actually to play h5, to try and stop the g4, g5 push altogether. Though this hasn't been tested much, and well, more practical tests required to determine whether h5 is equalizing here or not. But in the game, black played knight bd7, white played long castles. And again, black might have been a bit nervous that if he just played normal developing moves, that white's attack would play itself and be significantly faster than black's. Because normally when white plays a3, the typical response is to prepare the b4 break and use the a-pawn as a hook to open up the file to the king. But here rook b8 just doesn't do very much because the bishop is blocking the preparation for b4 and that gives white the time to get a very strong attack as the knight doesn't even have the d7 square to retreat to at the moment. So Svidler thought he could solve his problems by playing d5, which in some ways is a very critical move and certainly this d5 push is the dream break for black in the Sicilian defense because it's the way that he is able to challenge white's central pawn and it also means that after the exchange of pawns that, say if black plays knight d5, which he probably should have, well we can see here that black is the only one with a pawn in the center. The exchange of knights means his bishop got to a more active post. And admittedly white probably does still have a small advantage where moves like bishop f4, say queen b6 and king b1, well it kind of demonstrates the problem that black has with playing d5 so early. You know, white does have a lead in development, and therefore the opening the center does suit him quite well. You know, white's plans can include moves like knight f5 to use the fact that the bishop on d5 is defended only by the e6 pawn. Uh, it's quite a sharp position and definitely one that you might like to explore in your own time. Uh, also, move knight f5 has been tested, and even rook e1 is also worth uh, exploring. Though my feeling is king b1 is probably the critical move based on the theory. Uh, but Svidler played a somewhat surprising continuation, which I think maybe wasn't the best. He played the move bishop to d5, and on one hand it's kind of clever to be able to take back with a knight and hit white's good bishop on e3, but white played the move bishop f4, just kicking the queen, and obviously the move e5 is not really a successful fork, as it fails tactically. If you don't see how, then this may be a good moment for you to think about it and see if you can figure out the answer. Well, the answer is that you can play knight d5. And then you have a cool tactic in knight takes b5. Not strictly forced, but it does win a pawn after takes and queen d5. And the attack on the rook means that black doesn't have the time to take the bishop. And if he plays rook to c8, then, well, at the very least, you have queen to e4 which defends the pawn and also pins the e5 pawn, ensuring that black is not able to take that bishop on f4. And well, white is about to even win a second pawn as a bounty here. So in the game, black played queen b6. And Carlson did something very good that... Actually, this is one uh, of Carlson's superpowers. Well, you could say superpower of most strong grandmasters. Is that they make sure to bring all of their pieces into the game as quickly as they can. You know, the one piece is not doing much at the moment is the rook on h1. So Carlson played the move rook h to e1, lining up the rook against the black king and the e6 pawn. And we can see that it's quite hard for black to actually find safety for his king. And if he castles long, well, that's what Spiddler did in the game. And we'll see that the king is actually very exposed on c8, with the pawns having moved or been traded in front of the king. But if black plays a slower move like bishop e7, 
Well, White has a nice tactic here to basically take over the game. Uh, There's a good chance to see if you can find that tactic, since it's not the first time that I'll mention this move. So the answer is that while there are many reasonable moves for White, the move knight f5 is just a clincher, where we hit both the bishop and the pawn on g7. And, well, if black plays a move like ef5, we simply take on d5. And white is completely crashing through, you know, like the uruk in the Lord of the Rings movie. Uh, so, after the move rook hg1, probably the best move for black is b4, but I already feel like the position is very difficult for black. Where after takes and takes, the e6 square is quite tender, and actually if you look at the opening theory, you'll see that knight e6 and then bishop c4 is actually giving white a winning attack as it's very hard to deal with the threat to the knight if ba3 white will simply play the move b3 as a way to use this pawn as a kind of you know human shield to guard the king and okay if knight f4 while well, that runs into queen d7 mate but if long castles we can take and if black does take back the bishop then we have queen d5 and you know, if threats like queen to a8, or even for that matter, rook to e6, well, the black king has no proper pawn protection. All of the white pieces are in the attack against the king, and it's just an irresistible attack by white here. Uh, so, and if they do try to trade the queen to a queen b7, then a move like queen e6 is pretty strong. Black just doesn't have a good way out of the pin on the knight, and despite being a piece up, black is completely tied up here. Well, in the game, Black tried to solve his problems with Longcastle, but that leaves the Black King very exposed, as I mentioned before. And with the move Bishop b3, White shifted his focus to attack the Queen on b6. If Black does try a move like Bishop c5 to break the pin, then funnily enough, the move b4 is actually quite good. Uh, you might be a little resistant to play it because of the weakening of White's King, but because White is keeping a very strong initiative with this unopposed dark squared bishop. It allows white to take control of the game. And actually to move a4 is a nice way to kind of break open the black king even more using the b5 pawn as a hook for the attack. You know, with ba4 we can play b5. And you can see here that white's pieces are just flooding into the attack where if black takes a pawn on b5, the knight can then flood in when knight takes b5, you know, allowing the queen to come in and also allowing the knight to come to a7, threatening that knight fork. I mean, black just doesn't have any proper pawn cover for the king whatsoever, which seals his fate. So instead, black tried to resist with queen b7. Uh, maybe b4 is the best try, but I think the position was already very bad. And at this point, well, the way that Carlson played it was very practical. It's not the first choice of the computer, but it's a very sensible continuation. The computer recommends going for a piece sack with knight b5, and kind of just saying that, well, Black might be up a piece for the moment, but white can prepare to bring the queen and, you know, the bishop in the attack and that, you know, black just doesn't have any proper shelter for the king for the long term with a board full of pieces. But Carlson's move A4 is also very strong with the same idea of luring the black pawn forward, where if they take, we can take with the knights. And it's very easy to play moves like queen D3 and just pile up the pressure against the weak A6 pawn. Later, we can even imagine perhaps a rook swinging over into the attack via d3 as well. Svidler instead tried to move b4 with the aim of keeping the queen side relatively closed. But after knight d5 and knight d5, Carlson found a very precise move to target some of the weaknesses on black's queen side. He played the move knight to b3 with ideas of knight a5 to attack the queen that is defending the weak a6 pawn. It also clears the way for the queen to join the attack against the black king, opening up some different squares. Black tried to move queen c6 to defend. White played queen d4, just with the threat of queen a7. And not just bringing the queen close to the king, but also threatening bishop takes a6. And if black tries to defend it with knight b8, well that's already a very passive move to treat the knight like this. And if white continues with bishop c4 and just removes the one good piece that's uh, defending for black, then white should be winning this with best play. Again, the fact that the king is so exposed means that the trade of minor piece in general is very likely to be in white's favour, 
since these two knights are probably black's best defenders. Well, after bishop d6 in the game, okay, white could have played queen a7 if he wanted, but his move knight a5 was also completely winning, as black just doesn't have a good way to defend the a6 pawn. If he tries to defend it with queen a8, we can simply play queen c4, and this fork kind of spells the end for black. You know, if king b8, you're running into knight c6, and the other defenses are really not that much better. So black played queen c5, but by this point, the game is pretty much decided, especially with Carlsen playing with the white pieces. So I played knight b7, just forking the queen and the rook. We had captures, captures on d4, rook a8. And after knight d6, well, black white has traded off black's remaining bishop. If black plays rook a6, then the pawn f7 hangs, and white has won a second pawn for free, because the attack on the rook stops black from grabbing that a4 pawn back. But after king d6 in the game, white just played bishop b5. And white is simply up a pawn with the bishop pair, with the initiative. And soon white will probably even just win a second pawn, as the b4 pawn is very weak. And indeed, after knight, f7, knight 7, f6, and bishop d2, black has no good defense of the pawn, as king c5 is chased away by rook c4, and then captures on b4. So Spidler resigned on move 26 here in this position. So there you are. Now you saw how Magnus Carlsen just completely smashed the knight off Sicilian. And it's true, the knight off and the Sicilian fence in general is a very good opening. So certainly if black plays all the best moves, we can't count on an opening advantage. Nonetheless, with this game, I've shown you some clear ways in which you can pressure opponents. What are some of the critical lines to play to set the most problems to someone playing the Sicilian, whether they play the knight off or play a somewhat different variation. And with that being said, make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Maybe consider subscribing to be able to follow more content. And speaking of more content, if you want to get daily Grandmaster lessons from me in email form, then click the link below in the description to join my free email list and get some free Grandmaster lessons to continue your journey of learning more about this wonderful game of, and sport of chess. So I will see you in the next video, chess improvers.